These are yeah, the I mean, we'll have to see how it plays out. Connor Freaks will come in with LCK, what feels like a mix of picks. Peanut is just going to walk on in and wander towards Cuz. I don't know whether he necessarily wants to do that because the, the plants are doing a fair bit of work here, but just wants to be able to be annoying. And now Quantum has to flash. Crashdown not really going to quite work, but the flash forward from Peanut. They really want to kill Quantum, and they're not going to be able to at least not for first blood. It's a trade of one for one, but maybe it's more as there's a double for Bulldog. And Humble IP Sports kind of going a little too deep. And the plants was nerfed. And the damage to monsters was nerfed. Well, there we go. Apparently I can read as Quantum's lit on fire. This isn't great. Captive audience is down and Viper is just going to grab himself a kill. It took him a little while. There's a fourth shot into Leaper's head. And Cuz, looking to come on down is going to turn off that one as Delight getting taken down extremely low. There's a kill going over to Leaper. Deadly Flourish will connect here. Viper trying to get a little bit done, but the plants are going to come down. That far behind against the Rumble. This is all a good omen for this team. It's definitely working better than expected, absolutely. Uh, some grubs going to be going on over here, but they will be trade traded immediately for this dragon. Next tech going to be picked up. Next one going to be an ocean, and I have orcs right with me. And so that is going to guarantee that it's a Cloud Soul. It's not going to be Kentech. He's hoping. Yeah, that's uh, fingers are crossed. Um, I was on the desk with you, and you were paying attention, and then it was a Chemtech Soul. Oh, so. I, I guess maybe I'm wrong. You can see actually Viper moving up and has ult soon. Yeah, Glacial Prison going to fly out. Gets the flash out from Kuz. It's the Light and Peanut just trying to get to work on these grubs. Want him, wanting to take these ones down as now Zeka dashing in there. That is a great stun going to connect. The Magnus Storm comes down as well, and Stranglethorns does absolutely nothing. Kuz going to get hit by that last bullet. Good setup here from Viper. And they are able to grab the second couple of grubs. Doesn't have it either, but he's there first. But I don't think it's going to matter either way. It looks like Quantum Freaks have this on lock already. Yeah, Cuz doing a lot of damage to this one. And going to be very close to Leandre's at the same time as Leaper down here. Just free time. In terms of resources, he's so far behind. He's also Jin. Um, as, okay, Strangophone's going to come out one more time as Cuz is in a bit of trouble. Dudu coming on over, but a little bit late. Finally, he'll get in and goes all out. Flash out from Zekka, though. And Bulldog will be able to get into the pit. He is not getting out, though. Um, that is going to be Doran able to take that one down. Now he overheats, flashes away. The navigation of the aggro just kind of beautiful here, but now Peanut is stuck in there with Dudu. And uh, neither of them are quite able to kill each other. So Dudu is going to dash away. Peanut now just wanting to fight even more as he flashes on forward, finds the permafrost, equalizes there, and Peanut's able to lock down the kill. Thank you very much, Doran. Um, but it obviously did quickly backfire. Yes. Um, and he'll take a lot of damage here from the Harpoons. Um, Doran just showing that, yes, his aren't as high range, but they do hurt a heck of a lot. And they weren't on the nerf list. As now Peanut, he's going to show up, looking to try and kill Dudu here. Let's see whether they actually can. It is Cassante. He has no ult. And he will be able to mitigate some of the CC, but there is a lot of it available. That fadeaway was kind of sexy from, uh, from Peanut as Winter's Wrath comes down. And they're playing with their food a little, but they will be able to finish it off. Turret stacked up quite nicely, but the Rift Herald is going to be popped down in mid lane, and Leaper going to be the one to benefit from taking this turret down. And we'll get that local gold, so 300 in the coffers of the Zeri. Still 20 CS plus ahead. Well, Dudu's making his way up. We know that Delight is lying in wait. As this turret is uh, likely just yeah, to fall. Yeah, it shouldn't be there. Yeah. Um, it is really dead. Okay. Uh, Zekka comes on over, and he's going to grab another one. So we were talking about the fact that Viper's behind. Uh, Zekka isn't. He's, yeah. he's real big! And he has died three times so far this game, so it's a large reason why Humble Life Esports have now pushed their advantage, or created an advantage, as Delight now could find himself in a little bit of trouble. Tried to crash down and instead just crashed. Um, and he's just dead. Yeah, trying to set up a vision there. It ends up being really overzealous when the backup of the team pick going to come through. Yeah. Um, uh, if at first you don't succeed, kill Dudu is, I think, their plan. There's not a lot of CC between this duo, so Dudu doing the walk strategy to get out. Still, there is the Harpoon, as Viper has set up the uh, the curtains, and, yeah, Dudu's going to be able to get out. Uh, never mind, he won't be able to get out, because Zekka can dash after him. Yeah, uh, he almost got out, though. Not much gold actually received from that kill there from Zekka, and, you know, it's still, they make the play, they're like, okay, let's try and do something across the map, because we know we can't contest Dragon now. 
I mean, that play is not about gold. Wow. That play is about mental damage. But hopefully, Quantum Freak's like, dude, we got Dragon for free. It's weird. We have three. Plus Mountain Drakes, you feel good as a Cassante if you get a Mountain Drakes. That Let's see whether Quantum Freaks can make this happen, as Doran seems to be the target. They're wanting to get a minion wave in there. The Equalizer should be used on the wave here if he would like to, and there it goes. Hook going to connect, though, and Delight, he's running in, looking it forward. In fact, flashing in, finds the Magnus, Don't want him. is just dead. And now the curtains are called once more. Cuz going to be put in prison. And the last shot going to connect onto the Zyra. Bulldog turns up, Dudu teleports in. But Hummel IP Sports have made the defensive play work. Yeah, uh, Locke committed there to try and make a play onto Doran, but it ends up backfiring a decent amount. Well, Peanut is going to move on in. Delight needs to avoid a bunch of these rockets as he doesn't have his Warmogs completed just yet. Teleport to come in. They're not wasting any time. They know how important this one is. As there's the Hex Flash in from Delight. Cuz moving down, just trying to control the area with these plants. They've pulled out the Dragon. I'm like esports. If they want to stop this, they're going to have to try and start something as soon as they can. Equalizer is ready, and that's what we need to pay attention to. There it is, getting a fair bit of value on the leaper here. Zekka's dashing in the curtains. They've been called. Quantum trying to get himself out of there. This is going to be a 50-50, and it's secured by Quandong Freaks. And now the all-out does come on through. The hook is going to connect, and they take down the rumble. But now Hummel Life Esports, do they have them where they want them? The answer is no, the explosion! Zekka caught by the grasping roots, and Quandong Freaks will crush the fight as a result. That's another one! Cuz is an absolute monster, a madman. He's possessed on the rift right now, but maybe that was a little bit of a step too far from Quantum. And Hanwha will be able to at least even out the kill trades for our guard threat. And now Baron's been started. Cuz well, isn't in range and doesn't have flash. This might just be gone if they commit. Well, they're teleporting in because they do not want this one just to be taken right in front of them. The smite advantage will be there. That is Peanut locking that one down. But Dudu, a lot of value. Leaper is now altered. That's a brilliant equalizer just to try and get them out safely. And they should be able to do so as Viper is vi vi Viper He's vi running. He is running. He is indeed doing some running. Um, the rest of the team is moving on in as well. They're trying to get him out. Oh, saving Private Viper. And it's successful there Adios. as well as... Oh, the curtains! They come in and Bulldog... Oh dear, it's just not really his day today. After it really was at the very beginning. Leaper just not there though. He's able to take down a turret in the mid lane. And Hummel IP Esports, they're going to be able to take a turret of their own. Just when things were looking good there, four Quantum Freaks, Hunter Life Esports go for the immediate Baron Rush, and then they even rewarded. Quantum Freaks looking to try and control this bottom uh, wave as well. Quantum moving in, Peanut. They have the ward in the Tri Brush, an important one for them making any sort of attempt at this dragon. And Peanut needs to be very careful. He's going to get hooked back. And there is another depth charge. Peanut able to Arctic Assault to get himself away, but he just purchased that item that allows you to take all of that damage and then not really worry about it. Does need it to kick in, though. Yeah, it's going to take a while really to heal him, heal him up, so... Yeah, still some dashes here as the equalizer value is gigantic once again. Bulldog taken down to 50%. The crash down comes through. The all out gets Delight out of there, but it also gets Dudu out of there. And Quantum is just eliminated. And look at the residual damage here from that equalizer from previously. That is a brilliant route. Zek is going to lock down the Zyra. It's all falling apart. And maybe giving away the soul was all part of the plan. There's nothing they can do. You know, Quantum ends up being the one forced to tank the Force shot, he just dies for it. Oh, oh. no, Bulldog is just going to get eaten by a dragon or burnt to a crisp. I don't think the dragon really had Wait, much to eat there. This might be it. I kind of think they should have just pushed up bottom lane. I just ignored and just it. just left this turret to live. It has been such an incredible defender for yeah. Quantum Freak so far. 30 minutes, a Baron and an Elder to finally get that mid tier one between them. But what's the replay from this one? So there's a lot of focus here on a peanut, but they know he has flash. So they're hesitant to commit the Nordle Assault. As they push down this bottom lane, and the turret's available in mid as well. Yeah, this one's not going to be there for much longer. You have to be cautious, because with the Baron, you have the pushing power. You can take that mid one there. Yep. You can keep pushing for sure with the Baron, but you have to be a lot more cautious about a potential engage uh, in the next 10 seconds, because Quantum Freaks will suddenly go, OK, now if they step up, they overstep, if they misplay, we can actually engage and potentially win the fight. 
And the and amount of punishment there out. is for an overstep as well is not to be understated as Quantum probably didn't want to go into that wall as the culling is flying through. Oh dear, Viper going to be able to take down the new support here. Oh, the and damage! Oh my god! Leaper just getting barbecued! The Glacial Prison goes wide, but it doesn't even matter. Peanut's able to help lock down the kill onto the Zeri. It's a bloodbath! And Alma Live Esports are going to be able to take it. It was looking like Quantum Freaks found so many of these angles this game. But ultimately, it's Alma Life Esports that have the last laugh. 12,000 gold as they look to crash down this Nexus at 33 minutes into the game. We missed out on the Nautilus lore, unfortunately, but Quantum also having an unfortunate re-debut here in the LCK as well, as he will lose his Nexus, and Alma Life Esports will go up 1-0. There were some improvements we thought they would make. They've done the opposite of that, I would feel personally, in terms of adjustments. He's able to spread out those love tabs quite nicely, and all the double up onto Leaper there. Really nicely done here from Viper. And uh, I feel like it's still the same vibe, right? I know that it's it's Caitlyn instead of Zeri, and it's MF instead of uh, Jin, but MF in the early game does a lot of damage. Yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's more competitive. You can see Leaper and Quantum have control of the lane, but you don't have the same, we have a Zeri threat in the late game. So Quantum Freaks have a bit more pressure, but that's the only lane where things have changed since game one in terms of pressure. You can see mid and top both shoved in, uh, but that just mean Pina has someone to gank. Instead of invading, he can just kill Quantum Freak spot lane. Well, there's the flash forward. Delight lining up that stun really beautifully. Leaper is extraordinarily dead. He is going to do some alcove gaming for a few moments, and Peanut even gives first blood over to Viper. Level Ooh. higher, you know. So science is all about bookshelves. Yes. And Got it. Um, <laughs> And, and time dilations. Yeah, and, and cool black hole automation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, and Matt Damon turning up. And being evil. Yeah. Oh, that's a spoiler. As flash forward from Doran, he's going to overheat. Cuz going to flash away as well as Dudu looking to try and catch up. And Doran might just be dead here. Peanut wanting to get on over. Does have flash, but also realizes that Doran is really dead. Um, that was a weird m maneuver to, to make. The Doran we know and love. Absolutely. As Zekka and Bulldog are fighting, and Zekka is kind of winning. There's the flash. So um, Dudu having a much better time, Bulldog having a much worse time, uh, yeah. is how it's all kind of shaken out. And by much better time, we mean like down 10 CS instead of 20. Is, oh, okay, never mind. Dudu might be able to find a bit of an angle here. There's the all out under the turret, and Doran going to take two shots in death. That's the solo kill for Dudu. The Dusante starting to get online, you know? Yeah, it's not normal. But it, it is. And Normally I imagine it's that's easier to change picks than it is to just be better. But yeah. uh, that's you know, weird. I was going to mention a bunch. <laughs> you know, I had my list ready. You like jumped straight yeah. in. Yeah, I really did. <laughs> uh, all right. Peanut's going to grab himself a grub. We might have a team fight to save us from the conversations about uh, time dilations. Peanut's still sticking around, wanting to be able to grab this. And there it is, secured. Able to outsmite Cuz on that one. Might just give away one of them. Five grubs is feeling still pretty good, but. You know, I'm sure he wants it. Doesn't have Smite, though. Down to one health. But still, it is going to be locked down by Cuz. And Peanut just holds position for a moment. Maybe needed to scratch his nose or something like that. Although he was on the player cam, so wasn't scratching his nose. And now Bulldog going to get crashed into. Zekka dashes after him. There's the culling. And Bulldog going to have to get out of here. So they're like, we have to keep things as similar as possible. But, you know, with the light going top, I think it was clear HLE wanted to make plays towards that. Tell you what, very low. Well, we have some bullet time here towards the top side, and it's not exactly a good time for Hama Life Esports. It's a Cloud Soul in amongst it. You love to see that. Dudu is still going to go down, but I'd say that he's typing worth in that all chat like you wouldn't believe. We got some plates in the mid lane and the dragon secured. Uh, Quantum? Okay, never mind. They are just going to back away. Cuz was moving on up. He's ahead by about 20, but other than that, it is a win for Hama Life Esports across the board. And I would say that as far as the, you know, the run back is concerned, Humble Life Esports seemed to have learnt the track a bit better than Quandong Freaks. And he was also good in team fights, so it makes sense that he'd want oh, Rumble. Wait, they're in the Banana Rush. He can just ult it. Oh, God. And they're Look at all, the light! Look at the light! They are kind of lined up. If Delight finds an angle, though, that's where things are going to get dangerous. Somehow that connected? What? Okay, cuz he's just burning down the culling. Play it as well. He does survive, and that is the main thing, but that Drake is going to be secure. Oh! The storm onto for the bullet time in as well! And the all-out is mainly just so that Dudu can get out.
two of them already dead, lying on the floor. Zeka going to walk towards the traps and almost die, but he is going to survive in the end. Quantum oh. Freaks managed to get away licking their wounds, but man! You want to put in the Delight vote now? That's okay, Quantum Freaks now just parking themselves around the Baron, wanting to get a bit of control of this area. Right now standing on top of a ward though. Oh, Delight. Oh, Delight. Man. And there they go. They look for Bulldog and they'll find him. This guy can do no wrong. He is the perfect player. He is the ultimate support. The bullet time comes in from Viper and doesn't do a whole lot. But it doesn't matter because the show has been stolen. It is now in the hands of Delight and we must talk to him if we ever want to know anything about the show from now on. And the thing is, they got Kuz's flash. There's no blast cone. Kuz is going to have to walk around, but how are you supposed to get close when he's waiting? This man is here! He's crashing down. He might have gone a little bit too far. The door is going to soak a lot. And look, even the best can fall. But he is also matter. just buying time for the Baron. And they also trade one for one. So you take it. Exactly. You stop Kuz from getting in. Your sacrifice. Send this gold lead even further by taking down this inner turret in the bottom lane. Peanut is doing the same thing. He's just watching. He's just standing in front of Quantum Freak saying, what are you going to do? And their answer is, well, not a whole lot. We'll just watch while our inhibitor turrets go down. Yeah, not a great trade. Um, they got to watch Peanut. Yeah, they did. got to take He is inhibitor. very majestic. They're I mean, still the watching him. They're still taking more. Okay, and a Nexus turret. A Nexus turret will go down as well. There is only one more Nexus turret to go. Um, Dudu going to get knocked up. And he's not going to be able to find the Q there. Hummel Life Esports not actually fully committing to any team fights just yet. And now Quantum Freaks, is this going to be the angle? Is this the time for them to make something happen? As there's Peanut, he's going to turn around. The bullet time wipes them out. Another Magnus Storm is going to connect onto Bulldog. And now it's the flashes forward from Doran and Peanut looking for Leaper. Leaper is going to be able to take down Doran. He has not had the greatest 500 game that he's ever had. And in fact, you know, it's the first one that he's had. So we didn't necessarily know how that was going to go. Still, it is a victory. Humble Life Esports making it look easier here in game number two. And I am still just as confused as I was at the beginning of this game about what the drafting strategy was. And thankfully, we have the space to break down exactly what the thought process was. As Hanwha will finish off their second Nexus of the day. These are the best highlights from today's 2024 LCK Summer Split matchup. ...about what happens bot lane almost at all. Yep. It's about the Lucid Showmaker show, it's about Kingen finding the flank angles and getting into these team fights effectively, and then aiming being able to do some damage in the fight but isn't really the main character. I think that they've looked the best when they've been able to make those sort of team fights work. And D-plus will be able to take all three of the first grubs. DRX not going to lose anyone for it, I guess, just going for a bit of a flip and losing out on the 50-50 uh, there. It just feels so rough because you've committed all your members up to the top side, you've committed your jungle to come over, and then you don't even get one. Uh, yeah. D-plus starting it early, getting the good reset from Kellen, and able to get exactly what they wanted out of it. And now you can see DRX are moving down towards the Dragon, uh, but D-plus, you know, they could contest this if they want to. Yeah, you can see Lucid is down there on his Krug camp now. I think D-Rex aren't even confident enough to start it. They might just take the, the scuttle and back away. Which gives even more ample time for D-Plus to ready up before this dragon. Ping's actually coming out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Up here? Both solo matchups, pretty sizable CS advantages for D-Plus. Um, walk up a lane and just <laughs> unlash them. <laughs> like 100 damage level. Well, Arrow is going to come down, but Kellen is going to tank it up. I think he's still just really dead. He's just sort of stunned forever as Pleta actually using that Shield of Daybreak exactly when he needed to. It's like they're not going to be allowed to get close. DRX moved their strong bot lane up to mid just to make sure they have as much power possible. And when D-plus try and continue pressure bot, yeah, who will TP in. This is a good move, honestly, from DRX to secure the grubs and not give any chance for recourse from yeah. D-plus. Teleport at the ready, oh, a dangerous time for DRX. Yeah, Frog doesn't have TP. I think they just let this go. I think this is a correct move. It's just a second dragon. It is a Cloud Soul. Oh, baby. baby. Giving up the dragon, they regret it now, knowing it's a Cloud Soul. Oh. And Sponge going to turn up on top of that control ward, and it looks like Shelly is going to be next thing on the menu. Four members of DRX moving their way down. That is some, a high-value statue going to be thrown towards DRX, and the True Shot Barrage is also really good for the added damage. Teddy going to move around as well. Five members of DRX here towards the north. 
As D Plus, let's see whether they win this 50 50. So much poke coming in. Solar Flare going completely wide. And Frog gonna get knocked up. The arrow is avoided. Frog's burning down. Sponge as well takes a boomerang to the back of the head. And that is gonna be the Rift Herald secured. Boomerang connects. Buster Shot has to be used. But now Showmaker wanted to move forward with impunity. Nothing that they can do to stop you from uh, just sort of distorting in. King and now going to get speared here as Sponge comes in. Good flash. Solar Flare still going to get the stun, and Kingen is very much going to die. Pounce comes forward, and Sponge going to collect his happy birthday kill. Uh, it's going to be responded with an outer turret being taken down here in this mid lane, but the tower does also fall in bot, and I believe that was first turret blood being picked up by DRX. Uh, throws boomerangs. Oh, yes, as Teddy. Oh, he's throwing a boomerang at Ash, and Teddy going to flash over the wall, and Lucid is just going to break his heart. That is going to be a kill. First one for D plus actually come pretty late into this game, but it's a pretty effective one as well. It's King and moving back towards that top lane. Oh, maybe not that effective. I guess there are quite a few members of DRX here towards the top side, but Showmaker in the bot lane will be able to get a lot of work done to this turret. Yeah, I think Teddy either had to flash early or not flash at all there. Uh, against the Viego, he's always going to be able to follow with ult, so I think a bit of a misplay there and a summon a burn for no real gain. Uh, DRX now starting up at the top lane, potentially looking to punish Kingen again and get this tower. He is mini not, has no flash. Well, he does at least have a turret for now. Kellen's moving in. Boomerang connects onto Sponge. He's going to pounce his way out, but D Plus just going to keep their heads in it. They're going to take down this dragon. That is going to be cloud number one. Bit of extra movement as Kingen hopping in. Passive effect. Yeah. Well, let's see whether he can proc it, as his turret is just going to explode. Looks like no is going to be the answer. It's aiming, arcane shifting forward. We've seen that one before. Hit by the arrow. There's the cleanse, baby! Because oh. the cleanse was no. Try and stop him. Yeah. Well, head by Pulp onto Pleta, who is just going to return the favor with a stun. Not sure about this one. He has been ignited. There is the ulti. Just Kellen biding his time, waiting for an opportunity as old oh, Teddy. Oh no, Lucid, his worst nightmare is going to land on him once again. True Shot Barrage are only going to hit onto Frog, but they have them right where they want them. He tries to mitigate the CC, throws them oh. over. That all out was so sick, but the Pulverize is even better from Kellen. The double kill comes in now from Showmaker, he does immediately die there, thereafter, but I still think an absolutely sick play from D+. Plus. Aiming. The Arcane shifted sideways, not forward, as Kellen not going to be so lucky. There's a headbutt back. Kellen's still down to 50%. Pleta is just eradicated, though, and Kingen is right in there. He is just going to get taken down. Kind of a freebie. It's still a good trade for DRX overall because Kellen is so low and Kingen is dead. Kellen is looking for a flank angle. Yeah, and Yahoo actually just standing his ground. The Buster Shot does come in. He's almost yeah. just dead, but he is going to survive at least for now. Still, DRX cannot fight, and that is going to be Soul Point going over to D+. Showmaker really taking matters into his own hands. True Shot Barrage is going to hit Teddy, not Yahoo, who backed at the right spot. And I feel like Showmaker is so hard to deal with right now. Secured as well as a cheeky brutalizer on top as Kingen. All right, he's just gonna find Sponge and destroy him. That's uh, that's his birthday present right there. Beautiful flank angle comes in. The hidden knot ends up catching out the Nidalee, and now no jungler. T-Rex have to what? try and approach this and find a good fight. Kingen just jumped over a wall and won the game basically. Yep, that was pretty impressive. Okay. Let's see whether DRX can do anything about this. They don't really want to give it away for free. Xenoblade going to go wide. The arrow is going to be absorbed by the cow who just presses the I don't care button. They take themselves to Baron. Kellen goes down relatively low. Kingen does have that Mega Nar relatively available. Another great all out here from Frog. And that is a very dead Lucid. But that is the only thing that they get. The Baron's still going over to D+. Plus. I think they're still pretty happy. And a lot of Cassante interactions this game. Lucid not learning from the last one and tries to flash when he's already been ulted and ends up getting caught anyway. Uh, now, DRX might be able to get this second tower here. They have a lot of tower taking pressure. Yeah, True Shot Barrage does do a lot of damage to Teddy. You can see Showmaker, he really wants it. He's like, if I had a death cap, I would definitely go in. But Drex, the Baron power play is still in the negative. They're about even in gold. They are down in dragons, but they're keeping the hopes alive. Well, Kellen is going to absorb even more CC as he looks to try and turn up against the flash out from Pleather oh, instead. He has to flash immediately away. The ignite ticking, 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 and the bomb is just going to take the kill. Atlas, you silly boy. You've got to stay a little bit more observant. He's still at full health, though. That is a big deal. 
Frog absorbing, absorbing, absorbing. And uh, won't be able to do that one forever. Is now Showmaker looking for that battle. Oh, oh where'd he go? There goes, uh, uh, I don't know. Um, that was that death cap he was waiting for. And uh, worked pretty well. Ah, uh, got it. Wow, that was a lot of damage. Yep, and Yahoo, I mean... And I feel like in these fights, DRX have actually looked a little bit better. It's playing the map that has been pretty hard. True Shot Barrage is going to fly over. Decent mitigation, but now Sponge kind of out of the fight. Another all-out opportunity as they get rid of the cow. But starting the fight without Kellen, that has been the way they steal it. But that's a gigantic gnar from Kingen. Frog going to be taken out first. Pleta going to be second on the menu. A double kill for aiming as now Yahoo's trying to keep them busy. But he takes a fossil to the face and is turned into one himself. All right, Lucid just trying to beat Cassante. This is going to be his answer. Trying to break the hearts of two at once. And he's going to get, be able to get the first on his birthday. And it's a double to come down for Lucid. There's an ace. And they were pretty mad that they had their Cloud Soul taken away from them, and their answer to it might just be winning the game. And it ends up being a Dragon secured for DRX, but the engage from Kingen wins them the fight. Beautiful play there, and d Flush should just be able to close it out. The spawn time is way too long. Platter, you can't defend this solo, especially with reinforcements coming in. Oh man, I tell you what, Kingen, when he's on, he is so incredibly on. Doesn't quite find that, that ulti, but that doesn't matter because this Nexus is dead. First, he finds the Baron, then he finds the game-winning team fight around the Drake. Counter engage in the Renata, in the Azir. This Jace poke might be very hard to deal with for DRX, so. Waiting in this brush. Not sure about that one, as Yahoo just moving underneath the turret here, dashing forward. There is Yahoo's gonna go down. The flash out, and Showmaker stays alive! Back away, and Lucid going to be distracted by the dragon. Sponge taking some grubs as well. And so it's just some added pressure here, and a couple of plates picked up by D Plus in the bottom lane. And things are still rough bot lane. You know, obviously the big talking point was the level one, but. It's not easier now, it's just less bad. Uh, aiming level six already. There's a cleanse available for Teddy, but Pleda isn't gonna get access to that Unbreakable for a long time, so if he missteps, could be an easy handshake into Arrow Angle. Yep, and the uh, XP disadvantage. Oh, okay, we're looking for the Empress Divide. There's the Flash, and the Arctic Assault is beautiful. There's that mid-jungle synergy for D+. And that is gonna be the second kill for Showmaker. This Sponge wanting to collect a few more, but I feel like it's greedy, especially with the uh, position of D+, and the fact that Frog is in such a rough spot uh, underneath this turret. I think if he was to burn Teleport to try and come up to get a theoretical couple of grubs, it would have been a disaster. Definitely agree with that one. He's already quite far behind, and playing lane against an Ash, you know, we the team who got it. Yeah, what's it going to be? As uh, aiming, looking for first turret blood as well. And it is going to be Hextech. Okay, there we go. That's nice. much better. Uh, out of the two tech drakes, yep. I think that's probably the better one. Yep, I love Hexgates, honestly. So many fun interactions from that. What's better, Hexgates or Cinders? I think I like Cinders more because they feel new, but I think Hexgates overall I prefer, you know? Like, so would be an answer to that key. as well. There is a lot of telegraphed arrival. Thousand gold difference just in place. Yeah, it's pretty nutty. Lucid gonna come in. That is going to be the Rift Herald secured by DRX, but the hostile takeover. Kind of massive. Some teleports coming in, some hex gates being taken, and that is Kellen just uh, by himself. Glacial Prison going to connect. The arrow is pretty good there as well, but Frog finds the Gnar. Kingen to the skies, and that's gonna be the Azir locking down some kills, and now aiming is just mowing them down. Teddy trying to cleanse and trying to find some of the moves, but he'll find a double kill and then go down, and Naming finds himself a 3-0-2. Yeah, Showmaker Naming basically untouched for most of that fight. Just able to free fire into the pit. Aiming Showmaker like, okay, let's hit this target together, then this one, then this one, and now this one. Oh dear. Um, Kellen and Kingen are actually just lane partners. That's just how it is, I guess. And uh, they are now a gank squad. Mm -hmm. And D+, and I think that it's relatively close as Kellen looking for Sponge here. There's definitely a lot of tape to take into account as well, and that is like one of them being that, okay, Arrow going to connect here as Showmaker finds oh. the Emperor's Divide. The Twisted Advance is decent, but it doesn't really do enough. And now Frog is on the wrong side of this. Oh, actually, Nature's Grasp does end up killing Showmaker because he was underneath the turret, but Frog is also going to die. So we're going to say that that one was probably worth for D+. 1,000 gold lead, 320 oh, minutes. Lucid has all. 
Uh, Fletter. Okay, there is a, a culling to come through. That's a defensive ult from Lucid. The hop in a straight line strategy. Oh, we've got a little bit more of a fight here. Showmaker is just going to kill a tree. Happened exactly. I want to watch it back. And this time I'm like, you know what? Yeah, we could we could pass. We could pass. We don't need that one. No, it's, uh, it's, we can focus on what's happened in the present. Yep, and that's going to be Lucid giving a thumbs up to his teammates as they just destroy this in a turret. Maybe that's the birthday present for Sponge. They don't show that replay. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good idea. That's respectful on his birthday. And we like that. As Teddy doing the best he can. Shout out to Teddy for picking Pulse Fire Ezreal, my personal favorite. And arrow into handshake. Ash Renata, everyone. I don't think, again, I don't think any information was really gained from that. That's exactly how I expected to, it to have happened, and that's exactly how it did. But unfortunate for Sponge, not having a good time on this Maokai. And once again, the strategy seems to be wait for someone on D-Plus to walk up the side lane, hopefully kill them, don't kill them, repeat. <laughs> That is not a strategy that I would attempt to employ again. Well, obviously, they want to kill. They, you know, they're hoping next time they do kill ah, them. So the strategy should be find someone to kill, kill them, and then take objective. Let's see if it works this time. Owie. As aiming is going to demonstrate that they are starting off the Baron, and oh, I don't know whether DRS can do anything about it. Teleport is going to come in, so they are going to attempt to try and fight this off. Nabar position, pretty good. for It's, it's just gone. Yeah, you know, Sponge is like, oh, the hex gates were running late, you know. Yeah. Couldn't get there in time. Sorry, boss. Well, Lucid just boosting his way in. Nature's Grass does come down, but there's the hostile takeover. That gets rid of the tree, and Lucid's still dashing forward. He's going to be gnarled back. There is the, uh, the bailout, but it's just not going to happen in time. One for one trade in the end as D+. Plus. Maybe I could have just left the sentence at that. It's not looking good. You know, trading the kill. Best case scenario out of the situation, but uh, I don't think it's really going to make a difference to D plus pushing power. They will take the inhib. They will reset, spend all their gold. Is, uh, Arrow splits. And also just the DPS. You kind of forget how much poke you can just do with just like a soldier Q auto. Yeah. Yeah, the Conquering Sands just flies in. Shock Blast as well. Um, I don't know whether that's... I mean, he's only a 1-1-2, one, one and two, Jace. Didn't hasn't really been a game changer this yeah, time around. He didn't do a crazy amount of damage. Um, but the poke is definitely still there. And sets up the acceleration gate. Yeah. Ow. Um, okay, Jace, is, uh, Jace is still Jace, as it turns out. Did they need to buff the shock blast damage? Don't think so. I think Keen already showed us that you don't. I don't think so. And Glacier Prison going to connect onto Sponge. He's going to throw out his ulti as well. There's a little bit more. That's okay. See what else they can find here. But I it looks like they are just going to back away, grab themselves a Hextech Soul. Teddy can. Uh, in theory, but... Yeah. That's, uh, uh, that's, that's not helping. Uh, yeah. He's got it, Mega ready. Oh, there's a tower. Yeah, this is a, a uh, great Mega timing. As uh, Never mind, he's going to auto... He's, uh, he's, he's out. He's, he's I'm just hard. done. He's like, oh, don't worry, guys. I'll back door. Guys, I have a place right. to be. Arrow going to connect there. Oh, God! The entire kitchen sink! Happy just birthday! Just the tree! What? They are arborists. That was that was a lot of tree removal. Yeah. Brittle. Yeah. Uh, okay, they didn't quite need everything there, but that was... Uh, uh, the message was received. They get an ult out of Pleta here as well. He's going to flash for the Pulverize. Looks for an option. Hostile takeover means that nothing's going to come of it. Aiming will secure that one. Shock Blast comes in. Showmaker wanting to get more done. But they are going to have to settle with just winning the game, I think. And Showmaker is just going to push them all the way to the back of the fountain. Frog turned back up again, but uh, he still doesn't like the state of what's going on here. And still, Aiming is just going to grab that kill. Flashes in. There's a whole lot going on, but I think the Nexus is still going to fall down. The Renata is going to die as well. That is another stray Shock Blast picking up a kill. And Lucid just Arctic Assaulting around. And there's a sad bee in the fountain to represent Derek's feelings. These were some of the best highlights from today's 2024 LCK Summer Split matchup. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.